party. We're going to get started here. Okay, all the phones off. All the phones off. Let's go. Turn them off. Turn them off. So, uh, terrible day outside, I don't feel so bad, right? Have the end here. Right, what's the alternative? Watch the cabs in an hour, right? So, uh, we do want to get done on time so you can get home and see the back the second half. Um, so, we got a, we got a packed day. Uh, I'm going to go to 114. We have 16 brand new students coming in. All sophomores, they'll be juniors in about a month, and they'll replace the outgoing seniors. And you juniors will now become seniors and the upperclassmen, and then life is good, right? So, uh, when I bring them in, which will be in about an hour and a half uh, from now, um, we'll introduce them, give them a big round of applause, okay? Uh, Mr. Tranger and I spent a couple of weeks interviewing. Uh, we've got a great group of students. You know them all, right? Obviously, because they all go to early college high school. And I uh, want to give them a, uh, a warm welcome. Uh, we're also going to talk about an exciting brand new program uh, that we put together. It's a scholarship program. Uh, I think Mr. Petro, yes, he's here in the back. Uh, him and I will present this program to you, and I think it's going to be pretty exciting. And uh, we're really fortunate and blessed to, to uh, be able to do this. So, uh, but the most important thing is uh, I'm going to invite the professor up and uh, he's going to work with you, Professor Norm. Uh, today is a big day. Today is mission statements. And uh, you got to nail these. I mean, this is what uh, we've gone through since, I think, November, right? Um, Believe me, you've got the condensed version, and I, I don't think Norm uh, and crew would have done this if I didn't convince them that you are a talented group of individuals that can pull this off. So uh, we're going to see, okay? Um, you're going to get tested, and then you're going to work on mission statements. Now, uh, since we're in uncharted waters trying to fit this program into like four or five hour and a half seminars, uh, if, in fact, at the end of this, uh, we feel that uh, you don't have it, and by not having it means uh, you haven't grasped all the material, uh, the mission statements are not there, they're not complete, they're not accurate, uh, we're going to invite uh, Norman and the crew back in June, coming back no matter what. The question is, do they come back for a graduation, or do they come back for some continuing uh, education, so to speak. So, uh, good luck. I'll go into 114, um, and uh, you guys have at it, and I um, can't wait to see what the results are. Professor Norm, who's coming up? Uh -oh. All right, do good. See you in a little bit. Good afternoon, guys. How are you guys today? I'm Kim, for those that don't remember. We're going to start off with, I want you to close your books. Everybody close their books. We're going to start off with a little quiz, just to test what you know, what you remember about Tukuku, before we do a review. And rumor has it, there's a few prizes for those that score the highest, all right? So no books, please.
Make sure you guys put your names on there legibly, okay? So print it so we can read the names. So when you guys are done, bring them up. It's whoever brings them up first. Um, we're going to go in the order of who has the most points based on who has them done first. Thank you.
everybody done? Okay, so the, uh, the, the top five grades are going to get, we've got a new uh, planner journal from Tapuku, and it's a way to keep you uh, going through a transformation, right? It's not about information, it's about transformation. This book will help you with that because it's a place every day to put down what you're going to try to accomplish that day, the goals that you have you want to focus on, and then uh, the ability to track that. So the top five grades are going to get this uh, Tapuku planner journal. And Norm's going to sign them, too. So. I'll sign them if you give me those $10 bills back. That's how I'll sign them. <laughs> don't need anything signed. You just need to go transform, right? If I sign it, that would be external motivation. External, external motivation means Zillage, right? So I just answered one of your questions. Did y'all get that right on the quiz? Did you? Okay, good. Good, good, good. All right, we're going to do a little review, and now I'm going to ask you to, uh, if somebody wants to participate and maybe talk about your mission statement, the uh, the review is going to kind of help you also, also kind of grade your test that you just did, because I'm going to go through a lot of that stuff. And I'm looking for participation, okay? You can help me by participating versus me just lecturing and talking and teaching and all that stuff. That would help a bunch. So the uh, I told I told you guys kind of kept you up to speed on all the things that are kind of happening. I told you about going up Turtle Mountain and doing the Chippewa Nation, right? Did I talk about that already? So we're going there in June. So that's kind of cool. We're going to do a uh, a joint program. Oh, I'm sorry. Use it. Just so loud, I wanted to scare myself. All right, can you, can you guys hear me? Is that good, Ken? All right. So the uh, so we're we're doing that. Uh, we are about to be reentry approved for corrections, which means nothing with you. But I think you would agree with me. Really, what it boils down to, I don't care who you are, where you are, where you come from, what you're doing. I don't care if you're an inmate. I don't care if you're a college student. I don't care if you're a high school student. I don't care who you are. It still always boils down to whoever controls this thing controls this thing, right? So we're now uh, we're now part of a program where we're going to actually be part of a, a group of people, Marcia, that we're going to actually do a study with uh, uh, St. Luke's Teaching Hospital in St. Louis in conjunction with uh, a pediatric bariatric surgeon by the name of Dr. Jose Greenspan and a well-known, probably the most well-known uh, youth uh, gym in the entire world is Brand X in St. Louis. And we're going to be the mental part of this program. And we have a, uh, Kim, can I say she's internationally known, the nutritionist? She's an internationally known nutritionist. And we're going to start working on, on, on that challenge that's taking place in, uh, in America. So, so the, the neat part is, you know, cool things are happening. So, so here's the deal. Henry Ford, like him or don't like him, uh, bottom line is a lot of you have cars today because Henry Ford decided that he was going to break the mold, that only the wealthy could have cars, and he, he made a car called the Model T back over 100 years ago that, that a lot of families could afford. Henry Ford said this. Henry Ford said, a dream without a plan is a hallucination. A dream without a plan is a hallucination. So as we're teaching you, again, how to start controlling this thing, to make this thing, make this thing do what it doesn't want to do, to become what you want to become, when we talk about your mission statement and goals, it's going to be very, very important that you are either done with that, working on that, or, or again, we're going to come back together in June. And then uh, if you don't have enough by June, we'll come back together in July. If not July, it'll be August, September, October, I'm just joking, but you need to get them done, okay? Make sense? So let's do a little review. When, we, when you learn about a habit, a habit is basically consists of three components. Can anybody tell me what the three components are? Yep. Give you a clue, the middle component is the only, only word you had to memorize for lesson number one. 
What was that one? Routine. So routine is what you need to control, right? So when you, when you have a bad habit, there's usually something that makes that habit activate. And those words would be So there's, there are two possible words that you could use that happen to you that make you go into a routine. We'll say there's good, there's good habits, right? You can have good habits. You know, you're working out in the morning, you're swimming, you're doing your thing and all that stuff. That's cool. That, that's a good habit. Mostly, Tabuku talks about bad habits. It's how do you change a bad habit. So, what's that? Trigger and or, or craving and rewards the other side. Exactly. So. So look, here's, let me make it simple. From lesson number one, the whole lesson, if you can always remember what a habit is, it's a craving or a trigger that creates a routine that in one way or another, good or bad, gives you a reward or satisfaction that makes you feel better. So again, I'll go back to it because I use my grandkids again the other night. We were in Mitchell's having, you know, ice cream sundaes and all that stuff. You know, you guys want to go? I got some ice cream. Yeah, yeah, sounds good, Papa. I said, okay, let's go. So, so I would use that as my excuse. The bottom line is the craving or the trigger hits me literally every day, two or three times a day. I love ice cream. I just control my routine to make sure that the eventual reward or satisfaction is allowed to be something other than ice cream. And the same thing goes for, you know, if you're going to either do or not do your homework, for example, if you're going to do or not do something that's destructive to you, there's always a craving or a trigger or something that gets that going, make sense? Then you go into a routine, and then if you have a routine, you end up with a reward or satisfaction that's either good or bad for you. If it's a bad habit, like eating ice cream with pine every day like I did back in the mid-90s and gained 30 pounds, you know, bottom line, bad habit, right? So if you control the routine, that's step number one. Just figure out what the routine is that is bad. I get up, I get up late, I sleep in, I'm tardy for this, I don't get my schoolwork done, I, uh, you know, I behave a certain way, whatever it is, whatever the routine is, you just figure a different way to do that routine. Then you start analyzing the, the, the trigger or the craving that you have that has caused that routine so that you can have a different order of satisfaction. Make sense? So if you just memorize what, I mean, well, I won't go on lesson two yet. So there's, there's three components. You control the routine, work on the craving or trigger, and let the reward of satisfaction change, right? Everybody with me on lesson one? Just really memorize routine. That's why you really need to know. You can control the routine. You can control your life. And again, which I told you almost every time I've been here, you will look back. I promise you, you will look back. When you get 69, for sure you'll look back. But you're going to look back in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, and your 50s. And you're going to look back and you're going to say, that decision transform my life in a good way or that decision transform my life and I'm now in a bad situation. It's always the decisions that you make and the decisions that you make can be controlled by the routines. Does that make sense? So, did you make a good or bad decision to get involved in this program? It's a loaded question, obviously. If you say bad, then I'm getting time out and we'll escort you out the door. It's a good decision, right? Is it an easy decision? Is it an easy work? Done nothing to it, you know, doing six years and four years, what a big deal, you know, that's yeah, nothing. Now for some of you it might be. But for most of you, especially if you're like me, this has got to be a chore. But you've controlled your routine, haven't you? You're here. It's the same thing in every aspect of your life, and you're gonna make these decisions over and over and over again in your life. And all I'm asking you to do is let Tokuku become a little pause button that you put inside your brain that helps you make good decisions. Make sense? Good, good? All right, lesson number two was about motivation, hard work. 
odds of success. So who wants to give me the formula for uh, the scales of motivation?
you're developing good habits. So always understand, lesson two, it's external is garbage. Enjoy it for a fleeting second, because that's about how long it's going to last. I'm not saying not to enjoy it. You know, I don't know how you guys did in districts, but if you did good, that's awesome, and enjoy it. But then get on to the next thing. You know, it's the pursuit. It's the desire to who you want to move to. Get to where you want to get to, enjoy it for about five seconds, and then move on to your next goal. What's the next thing you want to achieve? I talked about the pond, right? You take a pond, and there's no new water coming in the pond. What happens to the pond? It stagnates. It gets stinky. That's your life, folks. That's your life. Your life will become stinky if you aren't growing. But if you have something new coming in, something a little better coming in over here, and something a little bit bad going out over there, and more good coming here, and more bad going out there, the pond stays fresh, the pond grows. So you do that through internal, not external through internal. So again, we control the internal and we control motivation through the formula that you gave me. Which part of that formula? So I've got, again, I've got what's my hard work, what's my odds of success to get this payoff? What's the only part you can control? Hard work. Hard work will always tip the scales in your favor. You know what? You work really, really hard, and it's a year down the road, two years down the road, three years down the road, and you still aren't where you want to be. Should you stop working hard? Obviously, the answer is no. Because all hard work is called the law of reciprocity, which I think I talked about. The law of reciprocity is law of reciprocation. It's impossible. It is impossible to sow and not reap. But the problem is always that second component, those odds of success. That's where almost all of us get messed up in those odds of success. Because I want to determine, I did this work here, I need this result right there. And yet maybe it's not a championship, maybe it's what happens in college. Because you keep on working at it. Maybe it's not even there, maybe it should become the best unbelievable swimming coach in the history of America. Because of what you learn, working hard in high school that didn't bring forth a championship, that goes to college and didn't even do anything there, and you end up being a phenomenal coach and changing lives. Never, never limit yourself based on what's happening as a direct result based on the hard work you're putting in. Because you're never going to be in control of when that food's going to happen down here. Does that make sense? And the other thing is, you're never going to totally be in charge of where, what that food ends up being. Again, you might sow into something here with hard work that you think is going to be this, and you think it's going to be being the best firefighter paramedic in the city of Cleveland, and you end up going to Wolf Mansion Company. And you don't even blink at buying your grandson $80 wrestling shoes because it's just like, I hate to say it, braggadocious, but it's like a nothing. Make sense? So if you get that, if you understand that is a part of the motivation formula, as a part of how, how you keep yourself motivated, to do what you don't want to do, then you have a chance to win the game of life. Now, everything I'm teaching you has an exact, has an exact opposite correlation, doesn't it? A bad habit, a bad routine ends up being a disaster. External motivation ends up leading you to thinking you're somebody that you're probably not, but you think you are, and then next thing you know, that goes away, and then you're down here, and you don't put in the hard work, and you can't get the reward you want to get. Everything is, everything is either this way or that way. Does that make sense? Lesson number three, most important lesson I think, most important one to me anyhow. Lesson three is pain association transfer. So I think I gave you my definition of one of my pain association transfers. In the morning when I get up and it's winter time, I learned a long time ago, probably, probably three cars ago actually, I learned to get up in about 15 minutes before I leave. I start my car inside my house. I go to my drawer where I have an extra garage door opener. And I hit that button so that the fumes leave my garage when I go out to my car. It's always warm. Now that's a pain association transfer because I don't want to get in a cold car. Now, that's a stupid example, isn't it? But to me, it's a pain association transfer. Why would I, why would I want to get in a cold car? I want to get in a cold car. So I think about the pain of pushing two buttons versus getting in a cold car. Stupid example. 
but it's true for me, works for me, I like getting warm cars. Think about your life and think about all the things that you can accomplish and all the things you can do and how maybe you can have an effect on other people or society or your family or whatever the list is that you desire to who you want to become. Think of all of that as this pain over here if you don't do this pain here. But again, a dream without a plan is a hallucination. So you can have all the dreams you want, folks. And I hate to keep saying this, but as I keep telling my grandkids, you dream it, do this, you know, whatever, until you put forth the action, until you actually apply the principle and start learning how to create pain association transfers. It's not a theory, it's not a concept. It's an understanding that you need to, in your brain, stop for a second, think, create a pause, and say to yourself, if I do this, that's better than this happening here. Or I could say, if I do this, that could be the result of that, and that's, that's, a, really, that's, a, bad, that's a pretty bad pain. Larry, can I, can I talk about you? Buddy back there spent 27 years. Larry was in uh, Ohio Corrections for 27 years at age 18, made a mistake. Spent the last umpteen years, been out a couple years now, spent the last umpteen years that he was in understanding that a, a decision made here, not looking at a future result here, can be a 27 year bad thing, right? But he also found out that he was able to, and I'm not going to go into great detail, but about 20 some years ago, have a change in his life that allowed him to be used when he was in there for about 25, what, you said 19 years? 19 years ago is your anniversary? 91. So that'd be close enough, 2016, 26. So 26 years ago, made a decision that changed his life. And as a result, he was used inside, and all of a sudden, he started using this pain compared to this pain. It was actually used for literally decades to transform a lot of lives inside of higher corrections. Now, you can say, maybe it never happened to me. Maybe you don't know anybody that's ever been incarcerated. Bottom line, I'm just telling you that you need to, you need to make a pain association transfer something that you not only do inside your brain, where you analyze this with the future pain, good or bad, but you actually need to create every day cognitive dissonance inside your brain. You need to create it. In other words, if, if, if I find out I'm not having a productive day, and I, I'm into my, it, again, we'll go back to time a little bit. I, I know I'm getting a little too windy now, but anyhow. Be, you know, if I decide to procrastinate, if I decide I'm going to be lazy for a day, that's all fine. I just don't live my life that way. So if, if I find out that also I have a day where I'm not, not disturbed a little bit because I'm not growing a little bit, I'll create something that I have to do in order. I'll think of this is this. If I don't get this done today, I can't, can't get to there. You know, how do you get a federal grant? for, which we are involved in right now, to do a pretty major study for a million dollars over three years to help people learn to transform, to be able to become a better productive person in society. You get that because you continue to work in these things down here that you kind of go, all I know is if I don't do this stuff I don't want to do, I can't get this over here. Make it sense? So just always trick your brain. Always, tr always, be, always, be comfortable, but don't be comfortable. Does that make any sense? All right. Enough of that, right? So, lesson number four was about the seven E's. Anybody? You're, you're there. Nicely done. Good job. Well done. All right. Hey. This will be a, uh, obviously I'm my grand, my granddaughter, this will be a, this will be a pop association, pain association transfer for everybody else. Let's see, give me one of those, give me one of those. All 
All right. Look, here's the deal. If you know what they are, then you can know where you are. Right? If I have seven steps of completing a lesson, and I've completed four steps, I know where I am, right? It's the exact same thing in the seven E's. It's basically, if I am thinking about not coming on Sunday, to help me become who I want to become, and the thought has entered my brain, and now I'm entertained that thought, maybe I won't do it, you know, the better entertaining, I start, I start examining it, and I think, okay, well, that'd be pretty good. Then I start enjoying it, because now I don't want to come on Sunday. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think I got cold. Yeah, pretty sure I feel good. You know, all that stuff, which I've done more in high school. I missed 30 days my senior year, by the way, because you're allowed to miss how many days? 30. I found that out. I read in the book. I missed 30 days. Then I missed 31, because then you can't graduate. I'm not suggesting that. I'm just telling you that, you know, I was pretty good at it. Don't feel good, Mom. So anyhow, you now experience it. And I already interrupted myself. Sorry, I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, so, so, so come in here. So now you experience it, and you don't come here. Well, that turns into a habit. See, it's like I was telling you about Taco Bell. Right? I told you guys about Taco Bell. Well, we're not there yet, but we're, look, we're looking and hoping to do any Taco Bells. We're not there yet. In, 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 in around San Francisco, it's called Golden Bay Bell, they're owned by AC Ventures. We're talking about doing this employee engagement program so they can get better employees. And I was talking to the owner, and the owner said, said so, you know, what are you going to tell them about Taco Bell? I said, I looked at the owner, I told the owner on the phone, I should say. I said, uh, I said I'm going to tell them, sorry about this, I'm going to tell them, screw Taco Bell. And he said, what? And I said, I'm going to tell him, screw Taco Bell. I said, I'm probably not going to use that word. But I am going to tell him, this is not about Taco Bell. This is about doing Tobuku to learn these principles to become a better employee. Because who wants to stay working at Taco Bell forever? Well, some people maybe do. And I'm not knocking that. But I don't think most of them do. This is about you helping somebody become a better employee so they show up on time. So they don't call off as often as they normally do. And they don't make excuses. And they don't look at this as anything other than this company cares about me so I can learn these principles to become a better employee, to make myself more employable somewhere else. So when somebody comes to them when they're a garbage collector like I was and see somebody working hard, they say, you know what? You work too hard to be a garbage collector. You need to take the fire test to become a firefighter paramedic. That's what it's all about. Somebody comes in and sees them working hard, Taco Bell, getting them a better job somewhere else. And that's basically all control right here, right? When the thought enters and entertain and examine it, and you start going through all that stuff, are you going to make excuses, which you're not because you're here, or are you going to transform and become who you want to become? Then you use your visualization techniques, which I'm now going over, so I'm going to be almost done. Visualization techniques, you only had to memorize two words for the visualization technique. Thank you. Who said it? Puzzle box. Why? Because it's easy. I, I think of puzzle boxes and I think of, I just say picture. I think of a picture, you know. So, you know, I'm so 69, you know, 70, I still want to do dance, you know. I want to be able to do quick dance when I'm 80. I want to be able to do it, you know, all the time. I want right one, left one, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Yeah, any, any combination, right? So, you visualize in the puzzle box, you visualize. What, what you want your life to be. Make sense? Then you gotta do all the other parts to be able to get there. It's not just visualization like we just talked about. Use your time more wisely. There were two parts of time. You had to memorize two different components when it came to time. How many hours a day? Two hours a day. Two hours a day. Figure out how you can carve out two hours a day to become more e effective versus efficient, because we always look at efficient as an efficiency, right? You always say, boy, they're very efficient. I don't want efficient people. I want effective people. I want people to get locked done. I want that Parkinson's law, where time creates itself in order to, in order to fulfill a task, and you get a lot more done. 
So you spend two hours a day carved up 10 minutes there, 30 minutes there, 40 seconds there. And by the way, Kim, you told them, Kim, that the bottom five in, in grades are doing 50 burpees, right? So yeah, the bottom five, the last five horse scores are doing 50 burpees up here in front of everybody. So, so hopefully, hopefully you guys can work, work the bottom five. So you spend, you spend two hours a day, and the two hours a day, you make sure you get at least how many things done? Six things. What was your answer? Six. All right. Six. Get six things done. Now you have to plan ahead to make a list, correct? Now again, if you're getting it, that's all I care about. You said you were getting it. If you're not doing it now, let the seeds grow, let the seeds mature, and eventually down the road when you get to college, you're going to definitely have to make a list. You probably have to make a list now because technically you are in college. So just start learning the principle. Start applying the principle. And the lesson number seven, burn the bridge, very simply is the culmination of the previous six lessons, isn't it? It's just basically if you do the previous six things, you will find a fault burn the bridge. And you won't go back to a pint of ice cream every night. You can keep the 30 pounds off, et cetera, et cetera. Everybody with me? All right, so that's kind of a lengthy summary. But we are done with the summary. Any questions, thoughts, or concerns about the summary? You guys have the grades? All right, here comes the grades.
far. Okay, awesome. Jump.
Thank you. 
cut back down for you. Pretty easy to chop. Kind of makes it pretty. Makes you pretty comfortable. Good.
Alrighty, everybody good? How many time frames are there in the vision statement to go? This was a clue. Thank you. They are BHAG, the Harry Audacious School. You need to have a BHAG, even at your age, you need to just, you know, you got to have something that you really stretch your brain for. And then, any chance anybody knows the six areas that you need to have a mission statement and goals in, five or six, five are consistent. And one of them is going to be unique to where you are in life. You know all six of them, six of the areas? Friendship would be like social, so close enough. That's good enough. So, all right. So, just keep that in mind. Any questions or thoughts on anything? 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 Okay. When you when you prove to us that your mission statement and goals are done, and you present them to us then we're going to give you a journal. So make sure you, in June, we see you next. You got them done, bring them so we can give you a journal, okay? Should we throw in some apparel on top of that? Should we throw some apparel in on top of that? I'll pay for the apparel. Yeah, then give us your, so between now and June, when you finish your mission statement and goals, we'll need to know how many journals we need to bring, and then I need your um, unisex t-shirt size. Make sense? And I need to know if you want pink, navy, navy, gray, or gray yeah. for a t-shirt. It says, it says to poop on it. I know it's surprising, but it actually says to poop on it. <laughs> so, okay. So maybe get that to Ken, Tom, who, who should they get the info for their shirt size? You know what, uh, give it to, everybody should have uh, Mr. Tringer. Uh, you should know who he is as far as the emails that he sent you. You send it to Mr. Trinity. Okay. Shirt size. Shirt size and color. He's been emailing you about your name. Shirt size and color. Yeah, just, just get your name, shirt size, and color. Make sense? All right, any last questions, thoughts, concerns? Thank you. Thank you much. Appreciate you guys. I neglected to do my duty and that was I was supposed to 